So today is April 14th. Why am I using this pen? No, yeah, that's okay. All right. We're talking about stoichiometry. We're talking about moles from chapter eight. And we're gonna start looking at chemical equations. So here we have a chemical equation where we're taking two gases, combining them with UV light, and we're making a product, which is another gas. We can look at the coefficient. So there's a two in front of this nitrogen monoxide gas. There is no coefficient in front of the oxygen gas, which means that we imply that it's a one. There's a two in front of the nitrogen dioxide gas. Don't forget your name, y'all. And we can interpret those coefficients as number of molecules, so maybe two molecules of this gas plus one molecule of oxygen gives you one molecule of product. We can also interpret the coefficients as moles. And we can say two moles of nitrogen monoxide combined with one mole of oxygen gas will give you two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. So we're going to go back to Chapter 7 stuff with balancing equations. We're going to pull in Chapter 8, moles and we're gonna start doing more conversions. So all of that stuff that we learned, you're gonna need it. So if you have trouble with balancing equations, if you have trouble with um, doing conversions and writing unit factors, please, please, please use office hours, ask questions in class, email, all that stuff. So since we can use these coefficients and read them as moles, we can also read them as liters of gas if we're using um, a, a same, you know, standard temperature and pressure. So for this, since everything is a gas, we can also say instead of two moles, we can say two liters of the nitrogen monoxide gas plus one liter of oxygen gas yields two liters of your product. So that's only with gases. And this is just, again, all the information that you can get from a balanced equation. It has to be balanced. We can write mole ratios to look at the different uh, relationship between the reactants and the products. But you have to have a balanced chemical equation. Cannot stress that enough. If it's not balanced, then you're not going to be able to use it. Okay? So we can interpret these as moles or as liters if it's gas. With gas, everything has to be at the same temperature and pressure, but don't really worry about that. Just know that if you see gas, you can represent it as liters. Oops, we missed a little something. So we need to talk about writing mole ratios. I'm gonna go back one slide. Mm. Now we'll use this one. All right, so let's say that we want to relate the number of moles of nitrogen monoxide to the number of moles of nitrogen dioxide gas that's being produced. We can write a ratio that says two moles of nitrogen monoxide gas for every two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas. That's a mole ratio. We can do another mole ratio to look at oxygen gas and 
the nitrogen dioxide gas. That would be one mole of oxygen over two moles of the nitrogen dioxide gas. And you can flip these over too. So it's not just like one and done, okay? We're going to use these mole ratios to convert moles of a given substance to moles of an unknown substance. So we're going to practice that now. But first, I'm going to give you a little bit of brush the cobwebs off from Chapter 7. I want you to balance the equation that you have here. So give it a shot. Balance this equation. I'll give you a couple minutes to do it. And then I'll have you put your coefficients in the chat box. Yeah, if you have a question, you can go ahead and ask it. Or if you have the answer for what the coefficient should be for each of the um, each of the compounds, then you can just type it into the chat box. Hopefully, somebody was able to balance the equation. I'm going to write out what, um, what I got here. Let's get the cobwebs off, y'all. Good morning. So, the only coefficient that needs to be added here is a 2 in front of the water. So refresh yourself on uh, how to balance equations and make sure that you can do that. Another bonus that you can do with every equation you see is classify the reaction. So here we have um, an acid and a base. So that means this is a neutralization reaction. So don't forget those things, you guys. Be able to classify reactions and balance equations, okay? Now we're going to use this balanced equation to answer the question, how many moles of water are produced in the balanced equation? So there's two moles of water produced. Now let's add on to that question. Let's write a mole ratio that relates the number of moles of water produced to the amount of magnesium hydroxide needed. So magnesium hydroxide is this reactant here. If I were going to write a mole ratio that relates the magnesium hydroxide and the water can someone give me an example of what that would be? Remember, we use the coefficients, and we're talking about moles here.
Y'all are usually much chattier than this. What's going on? Are we lost? Do we need to restart? Okay, don't just be quiet, because <laughs> I'm just sitting here talking to myself. That's not helpful. I know how to do this already. Okay, so instead, of, let's go to the whiteboard. Let's go to the whiteboard. So let's say that we have this reaction. Okay, that's our reaction that we were just talking about. And what we said is that the coefficients in front of each of these substances, we can read as moles. So one mole of magnesium hydroxide plus one mole of sulfuric acid yields one mole of magnesium sulfate and two moles of water. Is everybody good on that, that we can say moles with these coefficients? Okay. From there, we can relate the number of moles of a reactant that we need to the number of moles of product or to the amount of other reactants we need. So let's say that we have one mole of magnesium hydroxide. If I have one mole of magnesium hydroxide, according to the equation, I will make one mole of magnesium sulfate. That's all a mole ratio is, is you're relating two things and how much you need. So if I have one mole of magnesium hydroxide, like in this equation, that means I can make one mole of magnesium sulfate. The reverse is true, too. If I made one mole of magnesium sulfate, That means I will have used one mole of magnesium hydroxide. Oops. That's supposed to be a G. So we're simply reading the different um, coefficients from the reaction and writing mole, okay? So let's say that I wanted to relate uh, I'm start typing now, which makes me sad. So let's say that I wanted you to relate magnesium hydroxide and sulfuric acid. What you would do is look at the equation and you would see, okay, here's magnesium hydroxide, here's sulfuric acid. They each have a one in front of them because it's implied. So I can write two equations. I can write one mole 
of mg oh two over one mole of h two s o four and I can flip it one mole of h two s o four over one mole of magnesium hydroxide. So we're just relating the coefficients and the substances that they're associated with. So let's try one. Write two mole ratios that relate the amount of sulfuric acid oops, with the amount of water produced. So how could I write a mole ratio that relates the amount of sulfuric acid with the amount of water that is produced in the reaction? Using the same example, you go to the, the balanced equation and you use those coefficients. So try it. Give me one mole ratio that relates the sulfuric acid to the water. And if you're still confused, let me know. Are we still lost? I need you guys to talk with me. Let me know what's going on. Are you still lost? Is there something going on with the technical stuff? What's going on? Okay. Thank you, Cameron. If you don't talk to me, we're just going to sit here in silence until 1215, and that's going to really suck. Stoichiometry is one of those topics that can be difficult for students. So we have to take it slow, but I can't know what's going on if you don't talk to me. So if you're still lost, that's okay. Just tell me. How many people still feel lost? You can raise your hand. Okay.
All right. So what we're doing, okay. So what we're doing is we're writing mole ratios. A mole ratio tells you how many moles of one thing you need to make however many moles of another from a balanced equation. So let's say that you're making a recipe. If you're making pancakes, you have a certain amount of flour, a certain amount of baking soda or baking powder, you have a certain amount of eggs, and there's ratios for all those things. So if you want to double the recipe, then you add two times the flour. Maybe you don't double the leavening because there's a different relationship between the amount of flour and the amount of baking soda or baking powder you need. So if you think about the chemical reaction as a recipe, and in this recipe, for every one mole of magnesium hydroxide you have, you're going to make one mole of magnesium of sulfate and two moles of water. Yes. <laughs> Wesley, I'm sorry. It probably did take a long time to type. But yes. So for relating the amount of sulfuric acid to the amount of water produced, you go to sulfuric acid and you see, okay, your sulfuric acid, it's got a coefficient of one. So you can write one mole H2SO4. I don't know what I just did. Restart my browser. Okay. So we're writing the amount of sulfuric acid and the amount of water produced. That's what we're trying to do. So you look at the equation. You say, all right, where's the sulfuric acid? What's my coefficient? It's one. So I can write one mole of H2SO4. For the water, you look at the water. Okay, that coefficient is two. So I can write two mole of water. That's one mole ratio. It says for every one mole of, of sulfuric acid, you're going to produce two moles of water if you're doing this reaction. The other mole ratio that you can write is by flipping this. So you say two moles of water. You produce two moles of water for every one mole of sulfuric acid that you have. Does that make more sense? You can think about it like a recipe. Okay, your stream is going in and out. So it'll be on YouTube. Um, and again, this is a chapter that we're going to take slowly. So we're just going to get through it how we get through it. And if we don't get to chapter 10, we don't get to chapter 10. But I don't want to just blow through this and then everybody struggles. So that's a mole ratio. So you would write out the answer like this in a as a um as a fraction. So you would put the one mole, I'll try to write it. Looks a little bit sad, but it's okay. So that's an example of a mole ratio. You write it like a fraction. So you put the one mole of H2SO4 on top, two moles of water on the bottom, and then the second mole ratio is just flipping it. So you put the two moles of water on top and the one mole of H2SO4 on the bottom. 
how many people still feel lost? You can raise your hand or say me. Okay, you understand a little bit more now. It may also be helpful to do a problem using one of these mole ratios versus just writing them in, in abstract. So let's go back to the, um, the slide and we'll try a problem where we need to use a mole ratio to convert moles of one thing to moles of another. And that may help click it into place. And if not, then we'll just keep working on the mole ratio. Here we go. So with a balanced chemical equation, we can use mole ratios to convert the amount of reactant to the amount of product or figure out how much, you know, if we want to make X amount of product, how much reactant will we need? So you can use those mole ratios as um, unit factors. So let's say that we have five moles of nitrogen monoxide. Okay. The question that I'm going to ask is how many moles of nitrogen gas did we use to make that? So to rewrite the question, five moles of nitrogen monoxide, how many moles of nitrogen gas? The first thing you have to do is write a mole ratio. And if you rewrite the question like this, where you have your given information on one side, on the left side to be specific, and your unknown on the right, when you make your mole ratio, you will always put the number of moles from the reaction that's for the unknown on the top and the number of moles from the given reaction of the known or the given value on the bottom. Struggle. So the mole ratio for this one, our unknown is nitrogen gas. So we go to the equation. There's a one there that's implied. So uh, the top part of our mole ratio is going to be one mole of nitrogen gas. On the bottom of our mole ratio is going to be the given. So we go to the chemical equation that's balanced, and we write out what's there. Two moles of nit nitrogen monoxide. That's our mole ratio. The five is the given. So we made five moles. We made, the question is, we made five moles of nitrogen monoxide. How many moles of nitrogen gas did it take to make that? So that comes from the question, okay? Then your mole ratio comes from the equation, the chemical equation. Once you have your mole ratio, then you can take your given information, which in this case was five moles of nitrogen monoxide, and you can multiply by your mole ratio. 
you get rid of the nitrogen monoxide and you're left with moles of nitrogen gas. So five divided by two is 2.5. So that's kind of how you use the mole ratios. So you figure out a mole ratio between the two substances in your chemical equation, and then you multiply by your given information. Does that help make a little bit more sense with what the mole ratio is and how to use it? Okay, I like the exclamation point. So the question, I didn't write out a full question here, but if I did, yeah, the question would be five moles of nitrogen monoxide were produced, how many moles of nitrogen gas were required to produce this amount of nitrogen monoxide gas? So that would be an example of the question. Then you take that given information and you rewrite it like I did here, where you have your given information on the left and you're unknown on the right. So we were given information about the nitrogen monoxide gas. That's our given. We know that we made five moles of it. What we need to know is how much nitrogen gas did we use to make that amount. So that's our unknown. To form the mole ratio, you take the unknown, which is going to be on the right, if you've rewritten the question the way that I did, and you put that at the top of your mole ratio. So this is the top. And hopefully the colors will help. Okay. So that you see where it comes from. Oh, and then I circled the wrong thing. Dog on it. Wrong color. So this should actually be the nitrogen over here. What we're gonna do for the other is blue. So what we already know needs to go on the bottom, and that's where it is for our mole ratio. So if you rewrite the question like I did, we have the given on the left, the unknown on the right. Then on the right, whatever you have for your chemical equation, whatever coefficients, that's going to be on the top. For your given, whatever is in the equation is going to go in the bottom. Okay, so we're going to do some more of these. Let me look and see what I have. Okay, yeah, so we're going to do some more of these. Let's do another one. This time, the question's written out for you. How many moles of oxygen react with 2.25 moles of nitrogen? So this time, we have, and I'll try to stick with the colors that I did before. So for our given information, yeah, I'm not going to do that. For our given information, we've got 2.25 moles of nitrogen. So that's here. And I'm going to rewrite that here. 2.25 moles nitrogen gas. The question is, how many moles of oxygen are needed to react with that? So our moles of oxygen, that's what we don't know. Big fat question mark.
Our unknown, which is on the right, is going to go on the top of our mole ratio. So we look at the equation, we see there's a one there in front of the oxygen gas. So you write one mole of O2. Our given information is on the left-hand side. That's going to go on the bottom So we look at the equation, there's a one in front of the nitrogen gas, implied of course. So that's our mole ratio. We've got one mole of oxygen gas that's needed to react with every mole of nitrogen gas. Are we good so far? Okay, so all we did was figure out our mole ratio. Now we have to actually do the calculation. So you take your given information, which I'll keep that in red. We have 2.25 moles. of nitrogen gas. Please don't forget your units here because you need to know moles of what. It could be moles of oxygen, moles of nitrogen, it could be moles of any of these things. So you have to keep that straight. When you do the multiplication, you can get rid of the moles of nitrogen. That way all you're left with is moles of oxygen gas. Yes, you end up with 2.25 mole of oxygen gas. So that's all mole ratios are. We're taking moles of one thing and converting to moles of another. Let's do another example. I think I have another one. Okay. How many liters of nitrogen monoxide? What happened to the 2NO? We don't care about it. It wasn't part of the question. You only care about what's in the question. And the question was, yeah, how much oxygen do we need to react completely with all of this nitrogen that we have. So in this next question, how many liters of nitrogen monoxide are produced from 5.5 liters of nitrogen gas? So remember, because we have gases, you can say liters in place of mole. We're doing the same thing here. You're gonna write a mole ratio, you're gonna rewrite the question, write a mole ratio, and then complete the equation by multiplying by your given information. So I want you guys to try it, okay? I'm going to give you two minutes, and you can write out what you get at the end.
I'm going to start setting up the problem. You may have, yeah, as I said, I think that you may have flipped that mole ratio. Yes, so I got 11. I'll show you how. So our unknown goes at the top of our mole ratio. The unknown is nitrogen monoxide. So you look at the equation, the chemical equation, and see how many moles of that, or liters in this case, you have in the balanced equation, and that's two. On the bottom, you're going to put the, the, um, if the coefficient that you have for the given, which we have nitrogen as the given, and there's a one there, so it's one liter of nitrogen gas. We fill in our given information, and that's what we're going to multiply by. That's 5.5 liters of nitrogen gas. You cancel the liters of nitrogen gas, so in this case you're multiplying 5.5 times 2, and you should get 11. 11 liters of nitrogen monoxide. How many people are still like, so what? <laughs> question mark, question mark. How many people are still not understanding? Okay. Anybody else? Don't be shy. Yeah. So... The two liters on the top comes from the reaction. So let's walk through it again. I'm going to clear this and we'll walk through it again. We read the question. How many liters of nitrogen monoxide are produced from 5.5 liters of nitrogen gas? Our given information is 5.5 liters of nitrogen gas. So I'm going to write that down. The question is asking how many liters of nitrogen monoxide are produced. So that has to be our unknown. So we're trying to figure out if we have 5.5 liters of nitrogen gas, how much nitrogen monoxide gas will we make? The first thing you have to do is write your mole ratio. The unknown goes on the top. In this case, our unknown is nitrogen monoxide. So we look at the chemical equation 
for how many liters of gas are produced in the balanced equation. And that's two liters of nitrogen monoxide. Are you with me? You see where that two came from? Brianna, you with me? Alex, what about you? Okay. Now, we need to fill in the bottom of our mole ratio. The bottom of the mole ratio will have the given. So in this case, our given is nitrogen gas from the problem. So we look at the coefficient for the nitrogen gas in the balanced chemical equation. There's nothing in front of that nitrogen gas, so you assume that it's a 1. And we're doing liters because it's a gas. So 1 liter of nitrogen gas is what we have in the balanced equation. Now this says that there's going to be 2 liters of nitrogen monoxide produced for every 1 liter of nitrogen gas that we use as a reactant. We don't care about oxygen because we don't have information on that. So just assume you have all the oxygen in the world to do this reaction. Now we've got our mole ratio. Now we need to use our given information, which is the 5.5 liters. So we need to multiply. We've got 5 point, come on. 5.5 liters of nitrogen gas. You're going to multiply by the 2 and divide by 1. With our unit, we're getting rid of the liters of nitrogen gas so that we are left with liters of nitrogen monoxide. When you do that multiplication, you get 11 liters of nitrogen monoxide. Yes, no question. If that helps more, you can raise your hand or you can say yes. Okay, you get it. Good. Everybody else, how we feeling? Okay. Now, that means we got to do one more question just to make sure, okay? So I'm going to go to a blank board, and I'm going to give you a different question. So we'll still use the same equation. Here's our question. So the question is, how many liters of oxygen gas are needed to make 2.4 liters of nitrogen monoxide? Give this question a shot. Yes. I do, do you see it now? Yes. Oh, I wasn't going to do that to you. That wouldn't be nice, Cameron. <laughs> I 
I'll give you a minute to work on that and then I will put up my work for how to figure it out. All right, well, I'm going to give you the initial setup, and then maybe that'll help you out. But if you write out your question this way, the exact way that I'm doing it, then you can just remember what goes where. Chairman, your remember the coefficients here. No, it's not 4.8. Let's put this mole ratio together. So if you write it out this way, where you have your known on the left and your unknown on the right, then you're going to say, all right, I've got oxygen as my unknown. So I go to the chemical equation Yes, it's 1.2. Let's show you how to get there. You go to the chemical equation, and you see that you have one liter of oxygen gas. On the bottom, you're going to put the information from the chemical equation regarding your given information. Oh, whoops, I circled the wrong one. Eh, not that. This is the one we want. I know. There's a 2 for that coefficient. So that's what you write in the bottom. So the right side, the unknown, always goes in the top of the mole, mole ratio. And the other one goes in the bottom. Now we've got to do our multiplication and division. So you've got 2.4 liters of NO. You're going to take that and divide it by 2 when you put it into your calculator. You don't have to use a calculator for this. The numbers were purposefully easy. But you get rid of the liters of nitrogen monoxide because they cancel, and you're left with liters of oxygen gas. So that your answer should be 1.2. So getting that mole ratio correct is the biggest part, all right? We're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna leave the mole ratios on the table for right now, or we're gonna quickly go over 
um, percent yield because we're going to be doing that quite a bit too. So let me go back over. So when we're doing these calculations, we're going to be doing calculations um, from chemical equations that give us the theoretical yield, which is the amount of product that you can make based on what you have on hand, okay? The actual yield is, well, you do the experiment, and this is how much product you actually make. One of the really helpful um, calculations you can do is figure out your percent yield. How much of, you know, my theoretical yield am I actually making? Because it can help you make a process more efficient. You can see where you're losing things. So calculating your percent yield is really, really important. Let's just do a quick example. It'll make more sense there. So let's say that someone performs a reaction and they obtain 0.875 grams of copper 2 carbonate. The theoretical yield is 0.988 grams. What is the percent yield? So the percent yield is going to be equal to what you actually did in the lab. So you did this experiment, you weigh your product over your theoretical, which is the types of calculations that we're doing right now. Those are the theoretical, the calculations for the theoretical yield. and you take that and multiply it by 100%. So which number in this problem represents the actual yield? Is it the 0.875 or the 0.988 gram? Which one is the actual? Yeah, so our actual is the 0.875. And the hint here is that, you know, they obtained it. So you're going to see something where so-and-so performs the reaction and obtains, or the reaction yields. You're going to see some kind of clue in the text that tells you this is what was actually done. That leaves, by process of elimination, the 0 0.988 grams as the theoretical. You do that division and multiply by 100. So give that a shot, put it into your calculator, and let me know what you get. Yeah, you didn't multiply by 100. But yes, you should get something like 88.56 something, something, something. With sig figs, it should be 88.6. Yeah, it's all right. So in, in an exam setting, let's say that you put that 0.8856, right? I would probably take off a point for that because 
you knew what you were doing. You just skipped a step on your calculator. If you wrote out what I wrote out here, but instead of writing 88.6%, you wrote the 0.88 or whatever. Oh, there we go. My bad. I muted my audio by accident. Thank you. So, yeah, if you put that 0.8856, let's say, instead of the 88.6, but you wrote out the equation the right way, you would only lose like half a point to a point because that was just a slip of the calculator. What I really care about is showing me the equation that you understand how to get there. We all make mistakes. You fat finger, you push something wrong. Like I hit the F4 key by accident just trying to hit the four and that refreshed my browser. I'm not going to take off a bunch of points because of that. What I care about is that you understand, oh, it's percent yield. I know that 0.875 is the actual because that's what's been obtained. And the theoretical yield is 0.988. I care about that concept more than I care about the exact right number. And it's the same thing for the problems that we're going to be solving. I care more that you get the mole ratio right that you're using the correct molar mass, those kinds of things are far more important than the actual number at the end. The number at the end is important, especially if you're trying to do an experiment. But you have to understand the process. So when you're doing your homework for this chapter and when you're doing your exam, make sure that you show me your process. The more of your process I see, the more points you can get even if you have the wrong final answer. So we're going to stop here. We've got three problem types that we need to cover over the next two class periods. So that'll be Thursday and then Tuesday of next week. So we're going to try to do two problem types on Thursday. We'll do one problem type on Tuesday of next week and try to work in some practice for all three problem types. That's the game plan. I'm going to give you two questions for your homework. Um, we didn't get as far as I wanted to get today, so I have to revamp that because we haven't gotten to um, what we need to. But that's all right. So I will post the homework. Also, I'll say again, there was a typo on the homework that I just caught um, last night for Chapter 8, the, um, the third problem set. So I will just grade it accordingly. A lot of folks did not hand it in. You still have time. You can. You'll lose a couple of points, but I would advise that you do because points is better than no points. So if you have a question about it, you can let me know. Yes, so I do give feedback on the homework. I put it into Blackboard, so I'm not sure what it, I can probably look at the student view to tell you how to look at that. But for each homework, and well, I, I don't give feedback for exams, that's too much. But for each homework, you get feedback on what you got wrong. So yes. And I will also, for chapters six and seven and not eight yet, but I will be posting the answer keys to these as we get closer to exam four because it will help you with studying so you can revisit these questions as well. But while they're still up and available for credit, I'm not posting the answer key. Hopefully you all understand why. <laughs> so if you have any other questions like that, let me know. Otherwise, this is it for today. I'll post that revised homework, and I'll put the video up for this as well.